Hello everybody, Assassinator back with another episode of Xbox Catch-Up for September 13th. Now there's quite a few topics to review, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting with the thumbnail topic, which is that a couple of games have had preview versions sent out to content creators, and now their opinions are out there. Now the first game that I want to talk about is Forza Motorsports. Now it launches in less than a month, which is going to be on October 5th for early access, and the regular release, which is day one into Game Pass, October 10th. And with that, I'm hearing about 99% positive from this game. Now they're talking about improved graphics, which is what I would expect from next generation hardware, or it's now current gen, but over uh, Forza Motorsport 7, it's newer hardware. But they are also stating that this might be the best looking racing game ever to date, which means it beats out Gran Turismo, which is on the PS5. It beats out other games like uh, Ubisoft's, uh, what is that, Motorfest? So again, very high praises there. It runs at a smooth 4K 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X. There's a ray tracing 60 frames per second mode while racing, not just photo mode. There's better AI drivers. The physics felt great. And then we even had Windows Central stating, this is the end of Forza Motorsports as a series and the beginning of Forza Motorsports as a platform. Another saying, it is a racing game designed to last forever since this is basically a games as a service game. They're just going to keep on adding more cars, more tracks, more modes, more features that were in Forza Motorsport 7 and they didn't bring day one into Forza Motorsport. So things like that, but it's an ever evolving game. And one of the things that Xbox does great is they have a lot of games as a service and those games are usually thriving. They become even better than when they launch. Some of them launch in bad shape like Redfall and uh, Sea of Thieves. We've yet to see how Redfall turns around, but I do hear that they're actually working on that. But Sea of Thieves is actually a great game now, or at least in my opinion. Now this is a simulation racing game comparable to Gran Turismo on the PlayStation platform, but it has evolved. It is now, I guess, a simulation racing game along with being an RPG with some calling it, I believe the, the main designer of this game calls it a car PG, since you have to level up your cars in order to upgrade them. Now I do know some people are upset about that, they don't want to have to do that type of stuff. Now me, I don't mind, but also I haven't really gotten into simulation racing games since I want to say Gran Turismo on the PS2. But this one will bring me back in because I like all that I'm hearing. Now when it comes down to performance, I have the images on screen showing the different modes along with the different performances for that mode. Now I like my games running smooth so therefore I'll be just checking out the regular performance mode. I'll check out the other ones but that'll just be to see the quality. Just to see how good the game looks but not actually play it like that. Now the only bad thing that was pointed out was the upgrade system which takes some time to get used to plus some people don't like I said like that RPG type element. But we only have a few more weeks to wait until we'll be able to check this game out for ourselves. So let me know in the comments below, is this a game you're actually gonna be checking out? And if you wanna know a little bit more about the game, make sure to check out those early previews from IGN, Windows Central, and all those other outlets that got preview copies. Now the second game that I'm gonna be talking about is going to be Assassin's Creed Mirage. Again, a lot of positivity with Eurogamer saying, Assassin's Creed Mirage feels like a clear-sighted return to the series roots. VGC said, Assassin's Creed Mirage fulfills the promise of the original. PC Gamer stated, Don't mean to get ahead of myself, but I think Assassin's Creed is finally back. So overall, some great things to hear from the publications. It even received high praises for the setting, which is in Baghdad. Now the only complaint that I found was the controls, and that was only by one of the publications. Now it could just be that they're not used to playing Assassin's Creed games or maybe they're used to playing different Assassin's Creed games, the more recent ones, which control a bit different. Now here's a bit more about the game. It will take completionists an average of 20 hours to complete, which this seems like a game that I want to actually play. I will have enough time to actually, I guess, get through with it before some of the other heavy hitting games come out in the month of October. They also mentioned that missions, combat, and the story took direct inspiration from the first Assassin's Creed game. Which is really good because the first Assassin's Creed game is what got me to love Assassin's Creed games. So I'm glad they're kind of going back to that formula. Now some returning features will be stealth, eagle vision, instant assassinations. The combat in the game will rely more on countering like it did in the original Assassin's Creed games. 
climbing will now have visual improvements and what I mean by that is there will no longer be where you're able to uh, I guess scale a flat surface it kind of has to have an area a groove a notch something for your hand to actually grab on in order for you to scale that wall and they're going back to where you have to gather information on your target in order to locate them rather than it just showing up as a waypoint so from the sound of it it's shaping up to be another great game now check out some of the hands-on preview videos where they talk more about this game if Assassin's Creed Mirage is something that you're on the fence about or you just kind of want to know a little bit more about. Microsoft has come up with a new way to earn Xbox currency and it's probably not a way that you would have thought. Microsoft is launching an Xbox MasterCard credit card where you can earn points on the items that you buy to redeem to purchase Xbox games and add-ons. Now one of the cool things about this and the only reason why I'm kind of on the fence about do I want to get it is because you can add your gamer tag to it. So that would be really cool just to have on display in my collection. And will only be available to Xbox insiders to start but in 2024 it will be available to all Xbox players in the US. So if you're an Xbox insider you'll be the first person or first people to actually apply to try to get this credit card. Now basically how they do it is every 1500 card points, that's what they're going to call them, card points, because it's different than the points that you get for using Bing and Game Pass Ultimate, things like that. These are going to be separate. So every 1500 card points will get you a $15 gift card. And basically you earn one point for every dollar you spend, but there are certain items that you can actually purchase that will give you more points. So you can go ahead and earn a little bit quicker. The only reason why I would get this one is like I said, I would apply for it, I would take that hard inquiry hit to my uh, credit score, and then I'd go ahead and cancel it after that, but I would actually have the card in hand. So to me, that's pretty cool. But that would be the only reason why I'd get it, or suggest you even get it. If you need a credit card, like I said, there's so many better ones out there. Now moving on to the next story. It seems like Todd Howard is doing interviews all the time. Now, a big reason why is because one of the biggest games to launch this year, Starfield, just launched. So a lot of people have questions about Starfield and what the future looks like. So one of the questions that a lot of people have is when will another Fallout release? And I'm talking about another Fallout game, not that Amazon TV show that's going to be coming out. Which doesn't look bad from what I've seen, but again, I'm talking about the game. And that's what most people want to know. So Todd Howard has confirmed that Fallout 5 is coming after Elder Scrolls 6. Which that's really bad just because, I mean, Elder Scrolls 6, we're looking at releasing anywhere between 2028 and 2030. And then Fallout being worked on after that, I mean, can it be uh, 2035? I mean, that that's a really long gap in there. And a lot of people, you know, Fallout is their game. That's the game that they look forward to even more than Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield. But maybe one of the other Xbox-owned studios might end up, you know, doing like a spin-off Fallout game. You know, maybe Obsidian. You know, they would probably be a prime candidate because they're the ones who worked on Fallout New Vegas. Now, since I mentioned Elder Scrolls 6, I'll talk about an interview that Phil Spencer had where he was asked if Elder Scrolls 6 will be an Xbox console exclusive. And he basically said the same exact thing that he said before, which is it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis and it's too early to actually decide if it's going to be an Xbox console exclusive. I mean, if it's not releasing for another five years or so, I mean, we have to see where Xbox is. I'm hoping Xbox is thriving, but what if it's not? Obviously, he doesn't want to say it's only coming to Xbox consoles, and then he ends up putting it on PlayStation at that point. But with how uh, Starfield launched, I'm thinking uh, he's probably leaning towards it being an Xbox console exclusive and that he doesn't need PlayStation for it. But we'll have to just wait and see. Now these transitions into the next topic are kind of going pretty smooth because now we're talking about Starfield. Because over the weekend Starfield had hit some amazing numbers. Now let's go back to Skyrim because that would be the most comparable to uh, Starfield. It had an all time peak player count of 287,000 on Steam. Well this past weekend Starfield had a peak player count of over 330,000. So Starfield is pulling in some amazing numbers right there. Some great things to see because I think I'm approaching my 100th hour. So probably uh, today or tomorrow I'll probably hit my 100th hour in the game. I want to say I'm over 50% done with the uh, achievements, but I'm working towards that full 1,000 in the game. So I still got quite a ways. Now for those of us, including myself, who love collecting Xbox controllers. Now I've kind of slowed down on that just because there's way too many color variants and I'm looking more for the game themed ones. 
but Xbox is releasing a brand new color variant which is called Astral Purple. A clean looking purple color but nothing unique, you know, it's not that smoke color, it's not the camouflage, nothing like that. For those people who wanted a purple controller without having to go to Design Lab and paying that extra fee. Now it does have an MSRP of $64.99 and will release next week on September 19th. Now me personally, I'm probably just going to pass on this controller because I'm waiting on the next themed controller. Now I'm hoping personally that it's going to be a Forza Motorsports themed controller with it just launching around the corner. You know, we just got a star filled one, so I'm hoping for one for Forza Motorsports. I would be hoping for a full console, but I kind of doubt it if they didn't do one for Starfield and they haven't announced it yet. I don't think they're going to be putting out a brand new console for Forza Motorsports. But give me that controller and maybe that wrap for the Xbox Series X and I'll be happy there. Now the next topic will be about the release times for Liza P, which is coming out very soon. Now the image on screen will show the different time zones so you can kind of look at where you're located and see what time you'll be able to start playing Liza P, which launches day one in the Game Pass. But for me, it launches on September 18th at 8 p.m. So I'll be able to start playing it then. But if you want to play it early, 72 hours early, you have to pre-order the Deluxe Edition. I believe it's only a digital Deluxe Edition, which lets you start the game on Friday or Saturday, depending obviously on your time zone. For me, if I got it, it would be uh, 8 p.m. on Friday. So I'd have the whole weekend to play it instead of having to wait until Monday. So you have to decide for yourself. Do you want that extra weekend head start? If you do, then you got to pay a little bit more. Now reviews did start coming out and currently it's sitting at the low 80s. But based off of the reviews that I watched, overall a lot of people are enjoying it, especially those who like Soulsborne game because that's what this game is. It's basically taken a lot of what they did in those games and brought it forward. And from what I hear, they've done it a little bit better. Or at least they've taken only the good things and brought it forward. It's not as good as Elden Ring from what I hear, but it is better than uh, Bloodborne and games like that and it's a unique spin or twist on the Pinocchio lore. Now I'm still looking forward to playing it. It's all about making the time for it because from what I hear, it's gonna take about 50 hours, 40 to 50 hours to beat this game. And that's just one playthrough. And like I said in a different Xbox catch-up video, there's actually three different endings, so you'd have to do three different playthroughs in order to get all three endings. Now the last topic, will be that a game is returning to Game Pass, which is Spirit Fairer Farewell Edition. So that is included today in the Game Pass. So if you want to play it again or check it out for your first time, then go ahead and check it out in Game Pass. Now that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to hit that like button before you leave. But until next time, Assassinator out.